Hey, we're just off of Martha's Vineyard. I'm talking about Cape Cod. We're with Captain Joe LeClaire, and I'm telling you what, striper bass fishing should be good. Glad you joined us. Captain, take us to where Let's the fish him, are. <laughs> Coming up. Jutting out into the Atlantic Ocean, Cape Cod serves as the perfect launching point for some fantastic fishing. The area has plentiful striped bass, bluefish, cod, and tuna. On today's show, Bob pays a visit to the Navionics headquarters in Cape Cod and does some fishing with Jeff Brodeur. Captain Joe LeClaire takes them out to hunt for stripers on the surface. Keep it moving. Oh! Then they take a short trip south to Rhode Island and head out with Captain Ron Mouchon. They use live bait for stripers and catch a few surprises. That's a bluefish bite. Here comes. Whoa! Oh, where are you? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You've got to love it. Pretty on. All right. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, dude. Oh, man. Let's that one. Oh, there you got it. Yeah. There you go. All right. That is a monster. <laughs> The Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Nice one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> Good stuff. Woo -hoo. Look at this baby. Biggest bite ever. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. There it is. Oh, yeah. A good one. Whoa. Here he comes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. This is what don't be fishing. <laughs> oh, right. 16 pounds. Look at this. Real Fishing is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. Hey, folks, that's what I call real fishing. I was recently invited by the folks from Navionics to Cape Cod to do some striped bass fishing. So I loaded up the Suburban and left for the 10-hour drive. This morning at the hotel when I met my guest, he said, oh, sorry, I'm a few minutes late. I stopped and caught a dozen fish. First thing I said is, yeah, right. Well, I guess I was wrong. Jeff Broder, hey, hey Bob, Jeff, good to see you. we finally get to go fishing together. We've talked on the phone for a number of years. We're down here in Cape Cod, and you're with Navionics. You're the inland sales manager. You weren't kidding. You went fishing this morning before you met us at the hotel. Yeah. Right in here. Yeah. How many stripers did you catch? Did about a dozen fish. Oh boy, I'm telling you, he's spoiled. Grew up down in this part of the uh, world, I guess, have you? Yep, right on Cape Cod. Well, I'll tell you, this is one beautiful part of the country, and uh, that's what we're going to be doing today, folks. We're going out to do a little striper fishing with uh, Captain Joe LeClaire. Yep, that's right. I'm looking forward to it. Let's uh, let's get packed up, although I wouldn't mind staying here for the rest of the day, but <laughs> no, it's we are going morning. in a boat, right? Yep, yeah, All absolutely. Right. Sounds great. Jeff and I met up with Captain Joe LeClaire and headed out to fish for stripers. Joe has guided for saltwater species for years around both Cape Cod and Florida. He likes to move around a lot to locate the fish, kind of like fishing a tournament. We were fishing on the surface with large topwater plugs trying to call up the stripers from down in the rocks. I want you to watch this plug and if he has any swirling going on behind it, get a cast in there. I want you to get it in there and sometimes the most effective way to get these big fish is to fish tandem. If I'm able to bring them up on the first lure, I want you guys to cast in behind it as they're coming, okay? Cape Cod, Massachusetts, located on the northeastern coast of the United States, is surrounded by great fishing opportunities from shore and in a boat. There are many striped bass over 40 pounds caught every year, plus bluefish, cod, tuna, and shark. The area is a tourist hotspot with beaches, shopping, and parks for the entire family. But the awesome fishing is what attracted my attention. Hey, oh. little guy, get behind him. Stir him up. Oh, there he is. There's a big one behind him. Oh, yeah. Damn, there's two or three of them. Will it matter if I hold it in or not? No, it's over. Oh, it's not over. Get another rod in. Let me land the fish. Get a rod in. Go right up on that shoreline. There's a half a dozen really big fish there. How big? Oh, 25, 30 pounds. All right. How big is that one? How many inches long would that be there, uh, I'll Joe? tell you for sure in a second if you want to know. It's only about a five, six pound fish. Well, that's good. We don't need to know inches. There was a, there was a couple fish in there that were four times this size. And we're going to get back in there and get them. Oh, yeah. There's some giant ones falling, huh? Oh, there was... Three that almost banged their heads into the side of the boat. Yeah, there's a couple fish here, and yeah, we got them up, but we should really scoot down to my spots further down because 
I think they're fired up because the tide's coming in good right now. Okay, well, whatever you say, Captain. No sense in holding back on us. <laughs> We're not holding back. <laughs> I feel sorry for the poor person that has to have that little shack up there, huh? You can eat these pretzels, isn't it great? It's sort of like being on a live movie. You learn how to dance, are you? Ask Island Coyote. Who's ready? Who's ready? I am. Oh, yes. Get in there now. Want to get this in? Yeah. Should I throw him behind me? Oh, this please, there's a big one there. Let it sink and then bring it out. Uh, <laughs> I knew that. Hold on. Throw 30 feet past him and bring it out slow. Yeah. Two sets of hooks on that. You want a hand? Mm. He knows what he's doing. Mm. All right. Is it worth casting back in behind yes. us? Yeah. Real slow retrieve with that and get it to wobble. Okay. Good. Real slow. Slower. Oh, oh nice. look at right behind. Yeah, him. another one fall. Whoa! All right. Big enough to keep. No way, that's not a legal keeper. Oh, I need one quick photo. Oh, 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 the fish is getting good here. Come on. Okay. <laughs> you can tell, see, Joe is a professional guy. He doesn't want to take pictures of the small thing. Stay tuned for more real fishing after this. Oh, it's a good oh, bass. Man. Wow. <laughs> there are some bigger fish in here. Closed captioning is brought to you by FNCC and BoaterExam.com. We're catching 20 fish over 20 pounds a day. Way over 20 pounds. That's right. And at its peak... Fly fishermen could come here and catch 20 to 40 pound fish on the fly rod. And when people get a hold of that information, they're going to come here. Oh, little guy. Oh, oh bass. man. Wow. <laughs> there are some bigger fish in here. So would a 15 pounder eat a smaller one? Yes. Yeah. So they're just like that. So eat their own, huh? Yep. All right. Bye bye, buddy. Oh, he's a monster. Okay, guys, we had a lot of fun here. Uh -huh. Before the sun sets, let's run over to one more spot. Oh, yeah, one more cast, one more cast. Okay. <laughs> one more cast. Well, you remember, you're the boss. You know, just one more. Come on. Finished. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View. Sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. As you may know, we do all of our underwater filming with a camera on the end of an extendable pole. Looking backwards, this activity resembles a one-man band performance. Even stranger are the things we sometimes record. On several occasions, we've observed fish that are blind in one eye. From birth or injury, most adapt to their disability. Then again, there are a few genuine oddballs out there. We nicknamed this hunchback smallmouth Quasimodo. Bob likes to call them personality fish. Once in a while, even experienced anglers catch a fish they can't positively identify. 
Most often, it's a hybrid of two species. Some, like this flake, are man-made and stocked intentionally. Others occur naturally and, although rare, are truly strange. Enter the tiger trout. Let's move in for a closer look at this bizarre and amazing fish. Those weird markings are the result of a cross between a speckled and brown trout. Since both are false spawners, tigers can occur anywhere the two coexist. Even stranger is this technically impossible cross between a rainbow and speckled trout. Bottom line is, always carry a camera, because you never know what might turn up. Up next on Bob Azumi's Real Fishing Show. That's, uh, that's not a striper, is it? I think you got a bluefish. Yeah, that's a bluefish. We had a fun time fishing with Joe LeClaire, and the next day we drove to Charleston, Rhode Island, and met up with Captain Ron Michon from Breachway Bait and Tackle. Charleston is great for anyone looking to do some shore fishing. Breachway is a popular spot for anglers looking to catch a big striper from shore. The beach is a popular tourist destination and has some great seafood restaurants. So this is the famous Charlestown Breachway. Ron took us out past the breachway to see if we could hook into some of the big striped bass that the area is known for. When you rig these, catch just the nostril right here. Yeah. That way there, the hook's got to stay straight, and that way they swim straight. All right, you're going to keep your thumb on it. Now, you have to remember, what I do, I put the clicker on sometimes. you got to remember that this is a big bait, and a bass is going to whack it and stun it, and then he has to physically turn this fish and swallow it whole. Run with it. Is he going, or is that just drifting? No, oh, he's good. got it now. Now you can hit him. Yeah. Now you can hit him. There we go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now there's a lot of structure down, Jeff. Get rid of me. Just keep that. Get that bait right back out there. Well, I'll get this. Welcome shot. back. This is the second day of fishing down here. Off the east coast, we're in Rhode Island. We took a little drive this morning, about a hour, hour and a half drive. And uh, got a pretty decent fish on. Feels pretty good. I, I, you probably got a 20 pound fish on. Ronnie, you put us on fish real quick this morning. You don't mess around with me. You didn't come out here for a haircut. Hey, easy now. Did you see me without a hat? <laughs> I guess I now can they bury in any rocks here or not? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, so you, don't don't let them get down too deep then, huh? They'll try and get the best of you. They head down first. But once you you got them up, like your line's out pretty straight. He's up kind of high, so feels like a pretty heavy fish. I'm telling you. Jeff, bring him back in. There you go. Yeah, you work your way to the back. There you go. All right, Jeff. We're, we're yeah. still we're still right on the reef, so it's uh. This rod I got here is a crucial rod by Shimano. It's a big swim bait rod they use uh, out in California for big, large ones bass. All right. Using a rod like that is crucial, too. You see the soft tip? Now, when the big fish runs, something's got to give so we don't break them off. Yeah, and this, this rod has got a very soft tip. Um, a lot of power in the butt. 7 foot 11 inches, nice and long. That's uh, that's not a striper, is it? <laughs> I think you got a bluefish. Yeah, that's a bluefish. Well, the food the food bank people they like eating bluefish too. Okay, so. so we can keep this for the food bank. Yep. All right, I'll pull them around here. I thought for sure that was a striper the way I saw that flash at first, but usually they cut right off. They have some good teeth, do they? They have nasty teeth. Let's see if we got a picture of his teeth. All right, good old bluefish, huh? So if I'd had that hook in the mouth, chance there would have bit me off. Yep. Now is that an average-sized bluefish or? Is that's that... a nice bluefish, but they'll uh, they'll double in size. No kidding. So that's going to the food bank. Yep. This will right. be going to the food bank. This fish is about eight to ten years old. All right. All 
Hey, you got one on, Jeff. Oh, baby. Hey, hey, wait. You told me Jeff doesn't catch any fish. <laughs> There's an old saying, even a blind squirrel gets a nut once in a while. <laughs> They've known each other for a few years, you know, so they can talk like that to each other. I can't believe we land two bluefish. We don't usually land any. That just goes to show you, you know, the, that just goes to show you the skill level of the guys you brought up. <laughs> yeah, well, he ain't landed it yet. <laughs> we'll get ready though. It, it's a nice fish. Okay. Just be careful when you get close, Jeff. Too much pressure to pop that line. So I'm going to get the hook in the face. I had a guy do that this year. Not in my boat. Another yeah. boat. I'll go past the bar. No, no, I'll, I'll help you. Just reel them in a little closer. Yeah, the barb came flying out of the fish and landed right in his face. Oh, man. There we go. All right. Nice job. Yeah, good stuff. What a fight, though, huh? Yeah. Pound, pound, pound. Yeah, look at the teeth on this one. All right. More great fishing when we return. Right, Vipers! They're all bass! This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. Look at the amazing detail. We've got humps, all kinds of contours, ridges, brake lines. Jeff, the detail's incredible. Hey, I'm here with Jeff Broder from Navionics down here at Cape Cod at their headquarters. And I'm, I'm still amazed. I will never fish without electronic mapping ever again. You know, when I put that little cartridge into my Lorentz and I get all that detailed information for humps and all those fish holding spots, I can't believe it. And once you get used to it, you really don't want to be without it. We do a lot of neat things. We do the coastal mapping. We also do a tremendous amount of lake mapping in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, we've got over 12,000 lakes for 2007 that will be available from Navionics. 12,000 lakes. 12, now, lakes. I understand you're doing a lot of them in Canada now, right across the country. And uh, many of these lakes have never had proper charting uh, done before. And, you know, there are... They're, maybe the odd government map you could get a hold of or, or some of the other map services, but paper charts are one thing. To have it right on your GPS is certainly another, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, and paper charts are great, and they do the job that they're intended to do. Mm -hmm. We can go one step further, though. We can take a paper chart, we can scan it into a computer, we can recreate that chart electronically, then we can actually add different layers of information provided by the government sources or other sources that we have in-house and take that paper source and blend it with these other sources and improve accuracy, improve detail, improve situational awareness. There's a lot of stuff that goes into the, the maps aside from just paper charts. And one of the things that we can do with the mapping if we're targeting shallower water or deeper water is I can go in and change a safety contour and all of a sudden switch that safety contour into shallower water. You know how many lower units you people have saved me from doing <laughs> in? See, I fish so much different water through the course of the year. In fact, I'll be heading to Wheeler Lake coming up in Alabama. And there are areas there you don't want to run wide open. And there are areas you can run wide open that have old creek channels going through them that clearly you can see on your GPS. And uh, without the mapping, good luck. You better just uh, cross your fingers and uh, I think, I think that that's about it, really, because you're, you're just playing with fire when you do that. And, you know, talking about uh, fishing capabilities, now we're fishing spots that we've never, ever fished before because we're seeing the contour lines and where those highways are for the different species of fish that we're going after. So I think once you try the charting available from Navionics, you'll never go back to just going out fishing blind. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, appreciate it. On your left is all uh, what they call Jerusalem, and on the right is Galilee. There was an old story of someone asked them where they were one time, and this old fisherman was on a dock, and he said, well, that ties Galilee, and this side Jerusalem, and it's stuck. Getting a little bait in here, catching some shad. No. Oh, a jumper. That's a shad. Yeah, we want it. Let's get over there. <laughs> Look at this. That Jeff Broder is good. Yeah. I guess we can take back half the stuff we said about him now. Got the bait. 
That's my father's boat right there where it says, where you been? That's what I say to him because we can never know where he is. <laughs> no, no, that's what he put on his boat. Yeah. That's what a bluefish will do to it. <laughs> that's a bluefish bite. I may have to take one of the rods and show you how it's done. <laughs> What has Ronnie got on up there, anyway? Stripers! Stripers! They're all bass! <laughs> yep. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think there's a couple down there. Oh yeah, there's followers too. There's all kinds. What did Mark Solson used to say? Never leave fish to find fish. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can lift this. Using the bait rod to catch them. How would you like to fish anywhere in the world and know exactly what's under you through your GPS plotter through marine technology? And speaking of which, Jeff Broder, hey, hey, I'll tell you what, we've had a great couple of days of fishing. Thanks for coming down. You know, um, Jeff is the inland sales manager with. Navionics, the leader in electronic charting, and uh, we've had just a wonderful time fishing the last couple of days in Cape Cod, and uh, we also fished Rhode Island today. Who are we with? Joe LeClaire, Captain Joe. Okay, now he specializes in fly fishing for stripers, and also uh, plug fishing too, top waters, and we hit the worst conditions ever, flat, calm water. Beautiful, gin clear water. Mile high skies, bluebird day. Yep. But we struggled, but we still caught some fish. And then, uh, how about today? Rough seas. Today blew up. With the bait fisherman himself. Yep. Uh, Ronnie Ron Mouchon from Breachway Bait. He's yeah. a piece of work. Yeah, now, he I'm is. Telling Ronnie's you. a great guy. It was funny because uh, we got out there and it got chucking pretty good out there on the, on the sea. But we still caught fish. I mean, I've had a great time. And uh, we kind of picked a little bit later in the year to come down. We should have come down about a month ago. But, uh, hey, you know, you got to do it while you can. And I, I know I want to come back. Well, there's sure. always next season. We'll do it a little bit early. Well, I'll tell you, I've had a great time. Love to have you. Appreciate uh, all the fun we've had. And uh, next time, maybe you can come up our way. Well, we'll do a little northern it. fishing. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. All right. Anytime. We'll, we'll see you next week right here for some more real fishing. Oh, wow. I'm full of I'm coming to my today. That is a fish of a lifetime. Whoa! <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah! Wow. That was too cool. Oh, ho, ho.